Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about the Click PLC Modbus ASCII protocol. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So the first thing we'll do is take a look at our actual hardware that we have. And what you'll see here is we have our Click it's the C0-11DRE-D. It's an Ethernet module, so we're actually communicating through our Ethernet port. And then we have our RS-45 communication here, which is our serial communication. And it's communicating back to my solo process temperature controller. And it's communicating Modbus um, ASCII protocol. So if we look up on our website here for the manual you can see we can download the complete manual or we can scroll down and what we'll see is we can get it getting started installation keypad operation and for the keypad operation what we'll do is you hit and hold the set value and then we'll scroll through until we find right here this must be set to on in order to communicate back to um, either the software the programming software for the uh, solo or for um, other controllers using Modbus so that's on then we specify what kind of Modbus we have in this case here we want to select ASCII the, the other option would be RTU and basically Modbus comes in in three different types we have Ethernet which is Modbus TCP or we have serial which is Modbus RTU or Modbus ASCII and both Modbus TCP and ASCII come standard in the uh, Click PLC but what we're going to do is demonstrate how we can use Modbus ASCII um, in the Click to communicate back so we if we have some equipment that actually uses that protocol we'll be able to communicate to it Next, what we'll do is we have unit number. This is the slave unit number, and we have multiple slave units back to the Click PLC. Our baud rate, which is 19,200 um, uh, baud. Then we have seven data bits, even parity, one stop bit. And then we're back to the, the beginning again. So that is our settings of our solo. And you can see here again, we can go to chapter three and review how, how we do that with the keypad. Then in chapter seven, we actually have the actual Modbus protocol itself. And we can see that here's my uh, two protocols that the solo can understand, which is the Modbus RTU or Modbus ASCII. Then we have our registers. Then we have our location in which uh, our Modbus addresses are. So in our case here, you'll see that my hexadecimal, it's 1000, will give me my present value of my uh, solo temperature controller. And our 1001 in hex will give us our set value of our process temperature controller. So what we're gonna be doing is now taking a look at um, the click software. So we'll call that up. Here we go. And under the click software, if we look under uh, setup, and then we'll go to COM port settings, and then we'll go to our port number three. You'll see that we have port number three. It's set up for ASCII. And again, we have the same settings we had just uh, looked at through our solo process temperature controller, which is 19,200 for baud rate, even parity, one stop bit, and two data bits. And it also gives you the wiring diagram for the three pin uh, termination, so plus to plus, minus to minus. So you say cancel out of that, cancel out of that. Now, another way of getting there is if you go setup and you go system configuration. It will actually call call up the system configuration. Then we can double click on the actual port number that we're looking for. And you can see there's port number three settings, just same place that we were before. So 
we cancel on that. And currently right now we are um, online. So you can see right here we're online and we're in the run mode and we are communicating. You will see that we have our RS-485 uh, lights sending and receiving information back uh, from or sending it to our slave uh, from our master and back again. So let's take a look at the program now and what we've done is we set up a uh, the main program has a call to a subroutine called Modbus ASCII protocol and what we're going to use is DH1 as the present value and DH2 as a set value and then we're going to use DH20 as the change set value. So if we were to constantly write to that set value we wouldn't be able to use the keys on this to actually lower the temperature. So if we were to lower that temperature or change the temperature I should say and then hit set we now have 115.9 if we were constantly writing to that we wouldn't be able to do that so we've made a program so that uh, we can we can either change it at the controller or change it within the PLC so let's take a look at our actual uh, subroutine program now and the first thing you'll see is that we have a send command and our Modbus ASCII send is going to be colon, which is a start character. Then our slave number that we're going to, which on our solo is going to be 01 or 01. And then our command code, which will be 03, which is the multiple read command. Our starting address will be 1000, which is the starting address. And we're going to read two addresses. Then we're going to put in a, a value called e, or the value EA, which is the LRC or longitudinal redundancy check error uh, check byte so that's what goes in so that's what's going out of our controller so we send that out the port and then what we do is we wait for our receive and in our receive we will get the um, ASCII again ASCII meaning American Standard uh, uh, code for information interchange then we have our start character again we have our slave, we have our command code, which is 03. We have the number of bytes times two returned because ASCII takes twice, twice as long as what the RTDU uses in, in hexadecimal bits. Then we have our data from our first register, our data from our second register, and they'll be our present value and set value respectively. Then we have our LRC for that information coming back and um, we can verify that if we want to. So then we, after we've done this, when the correct number of bits return, then what we do is we set this. And what we've done is set up a timer and a timer then uh, waits for 10 milliseconds before it does anything else, sending or receiving off that port. Then what we do is we convert our return value, which are in, in hex or ASCII code, which is text code. And we'll convert that into DH1 for our solo present value and DH2 which is our uh, set value. So again you'll see these in hex numbers here and what we can do is we'll later call this up in our uh, data uh, view to actually view them actually as an integer value. So that takes care of our read. Now once our reads complete what we're going to do is we're going to uh, now do a send and the send will actually send values so if our change value is greater than zero, what we're going to do is we're going to copy that value into the right value. We're going to set a bit saying that we're ready to go. And then we're going to um, unpack DH3 into the lower bit and upper bit so we can calculate our LRC. Then what we'll do is we will um, pack our um, bits up that we have and we'll copy those down next what we do is we copy or we will calculate our lrc for sending the data to the solo so what that is is we are taking each bit so 01 plus 06 plus 10 plus 01 plus the other values and calculating how much that is so in our case here we're having 16 plus our lower significant bit and our upper and that calculates out to there. And then what we do is um, 
Then we copy that into our text value. Then what we do is assemble all this together so that we have a complete string. Then we change the solo uh, time delay. So before we send it out of the port, we're actually delaying again another 10 milliseconds. And then we send that out using the send ASCII out our port number three that we set up already. Then we look for our return value coming back. And if it's successful, then we have our done bit. Then once our done bit is done, again, another 10 milliseconds delay before we reset all of our parameters and put a zero back into uh, DH20. Then what we do is, um, are we one more twice or 10 millisecond delay? And then we reset back to the beginning again, which is back up to right here. Now, if we have any errors, then what we do is we do a timeout delay. So if we're not sending or asking for that uh, present value set value, what we'll do is turn on this output. We'll do that as a one shot. And when that happens, it times out and it will actually then um, trigger my reset, which is block, which is right up here and resets the parameters again so that we can communicate. Now, again, this program can be downloaded at our website at accautomation.ca. Now, once we have that done, well, let's take a look at our actual ASCII values in our data monitor. So here we go. And we've called up our solo present value and our set value. And we've changed these viewing format to integer so we can actually see that integer value for us. So you can see right now, our, our solo present value is 245. If I were to warm this up a little bit, you can see that my value is changing and we can see that change happening within their controller as well as um, in our software here. So that's working fine. We're reading that, that set value or present value, no problem. Now our set value, if we want to change it, remember right now it's zero. So if we want to change it, we put a three, so we'll say 300, so which is 30.0, we'll write that in. And automatically then it goes back to zero and you can see now on my controller, I have the value 30.0. If we want to change that again, we'll put one, two, three, and we'll change that and it changes it back to one, two, three. So you can see very simple, very straightforward protocol that we have here. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click that bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.